So um, there's this, this interesting question of what it means to live forever. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, this funny uh, alignment, I think, between this question of immortality in the book and also the potential of immortality of text, which is something that kind of we, grew, we you know, grew up with the idea that texts live forever, yeah. like you know, the Bible. Um, but that's not necessarily the, you know, the case anymore. Yeah, but even so, I mean, it's interesting because you, you, I mean, people often ask, well, why do you write? And people say, well, I write because I, don't, you know, I want a part of me to live on forever. Right. Julian Barnes, in one of his latest books, was very good about this. I can't remember the name of the book, um, but he talked about how even the same thing you mentioned, that even having a book out doesn't mean it will live forever. Text can die. If you look at it further, the planet can die, which is really a, a much larger right. question it's, than any of this. Awkward. Uh, an awkward little question, <laughs> especially when you live in zone A of New York flood zones. Um, so, you know, it's... it's uh, but immortality is very vexing for writers, and I think that when I was thinking about this, I was thinking more of the cult of youth, the idea that uh, what do we do as we age? What, what position do we take in life? Um, is having children the only way to sort of regenerate, or, or, or is there some other way to do it? Um, and I came up with no satisfactory answers. The, the book is just a bunch of questions. I, I always thought that religion was about immortality. And we had spent, uh, Soviet Jews used to be funneled through Italy before they came to America. Hayes was nice enough to pay for half a year of really good living in Italy. Um, and I remember walking into St. Peter's or into any cathedral and sort of being struck by angels and the idea that, that, that there was life everlasting. I never quite bought it, but I really wanted it to be that way because I was so scared of death. And I remember when I was in Hebrew school, the one question I really had for the rabbis, I couldn't care about the Talmud or anything else was going on, but you know, what's going to happen when I die? And there were many interpretations, but one was nothing, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And I was like, what a great religion, jeez, you know. We've got to work on this aspect if we're going to brand this, you know. And, and the other was some complicated things, some netherworld where a goat is tied to a stake or something. It was unbelievably bad. <laughs> Worst heaven ever. And, and, but the idea that religion is about immortality is nothing new, obviously, but in my child's mind, it, it really stuck. And so, you know, so I go to my analyst and we talk about the here and now, obviously, and then next door to it is this synagogue that mm -hmm. is, in some ways, perhaps, it has these stained glass windows that make it almost cathedral-like, mm -hmm. as, as so much of, of architecture in synagogues in New York is. So for me, it, it was a very natural progression to set mm -hmm. a book about immortality within, those, within that space.